Stand by for some facts with your fiction. It's Mythbusters versus Zombies. If you've ever screamed at the screen, no, take the axe, not the gun, or argued over the apocalyptic logic of the horde's ability to bust down doors, or wondered why slow-paced, shuffling zombies ever catch anybody, then the Mythbusters are here to help. This is the science of the dead. What's up first? Well, let me ask you, if you're surrounded by a zombie horde, you could choose only one weapon, what would you choose? The gun? or the axe. The gun. Right, most people would, but there's a myth that the axe is in fact the better tool. Really? Yeah, so what do you say? You take the gun, I take the axe, let's go find some zombies. Zombies are fictional. Right, let's go find 100 people willing to dress as zombies. Okay. How hard could that be? As it turns out, not hard at all. Mythbusters fans love getting dressed up. Now, how exactly are Adam and Jamie going to test the weapon's lethal efficiency without actually hurting anybody? Now, since Jamie's weapon of choice is a gun, and the only fictional way to kill a fictional zombie is with a headshot, we're gonna need to shoot our zombie volunteers in the face, which means we're gonna have to protect the faces of our zombie volunteers. The answer is plastic face protectors. I think this is gonna work! And paintball guns. This is gonna make my day. Yep, it's shooting at him in the face day. Bullseye! Jamie hit me dead between the eyes while I was wearing my zombie mask and I didn't feel a thing, which is exactly what I want our volunteers to be feeling. So now the prototype works, it's time to mass manufacture at least 100 of these. So with the shop converted into a factory assembly line. Come on, baby! Adam produces masks for each of our century of volunteers. All of this work just so that Jamie Heineman can shoot strangers in the face. For science! <laughs> Next, Adam turns to the myth-preferred method for wasting walkers. Now, I'm quite sure you all agree with me that the weapon I've chosen for killing zombies, the axe, is far superior to the gun. But since zombies don't actually exist and I won't be able to drive an actual axe through their ever-loving undead skulls, I'm gonna have to come up with a safe way for killing our zombies. <laughs> Cue Adam's clever cushioned cleaver. It'll leave a safe green paint splatter for every zombie brain splattered. Oh, this is awesome. The paintball paint that I put in the compartment last night has beautifully seeped through the foam. Let's see what kind of mark it makes. That is the mark of one dead zombie. Except that they're already dead. Let's just call them inactive zombies. Let's get to testing! And so, with weapons at the ready... You'll like this place. It's nice and creepy. The team assembles at the perfect location for a spot of zombie <laughs> annihilation. If I was hiding out from zombies, this is exactly the kind of citadel I would seek out. Zombies! That's the arena. Now, how will it be used? The methodology here is pretty straightforward. I'll be standing in the middle of a 30-foot diameter circle that is the human zone. Woof. These zombies will be dotted around the building in their green zombie zone. Now, when we give the signal, they will start their zombie shuffle towards the line of demarcation. Come on. Now, we can't engage them until they reach that orange line, but once they do... <laughs> they're all ours. I don't expect to make it through all 100 zombies. The question is, how far will I get? Brains. And the rules will be the same for me, except I'm gonna be packing a gun. Bang. Oh, oh brains! <laughs> That's the rules and regulations. But how about the test subjects? Now, let's be honest. Zombies are fiction, which means every way of dealing with them is also fictional. But for the purposes of our experimentation in this episode, we are holding to some agreed-upon zombie tropes. For instance, our zombies are slow-moving zombies. They're real zombies. As for how to dispatch them, we thought we needed an expert. So where better to go than the one and only Michael Rooker, AKA Merle Dixon from The Walking Dead? He is going to show Jamie some of his preferred methodologies for dispatching the undead. Michael, any advice on taking out zombies? Well, I notice you have a couple of handy dandy uh, weapons here. Well, all we need now is a zombie, I guess, huh? 
Oh, we got plenty of those. Cue the undead man walking. I see. Well, thank you. If they're approaching, they just pop them in the knee. Bang. They're still approaching. Pop them in the other knee. Bang. Of course, they are kind of hungry. And they're a little... Okay. Usually, I grab them and hold them down like that, and I pop them in the head. Bang. Nice. Whew. That's one down. But to test which weapon is the most efficient to deal with zombies en masse, we need a horde. <laughs> that is an awesome view. And for experimental accuracy, they need to know exactly how to move. Good morning, zombies. Morning! Oh, no, 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 no. Like zombies. Good morning, zombies. You might recognize this gentleman to my right, Michael Rooker from The Walking Dead. Now, Michael is going to give you guys a lesson in the zombie shuffle. Using all his Walking Dead experience, Michael coaches the volunteers on zombie behavior, an unintelligent, slow shuffle towards food. Much better. With a unique twist. That's good. Cut. OK, very good. You're scary. You know, and everybody, you got to develop your own walk. If he's an individual zombie, you're all individual zombies. You're not cookie cutter zombies. Develop your own deal. With the demonstration complete, school's out. All right, commence zombie shuffle now. And the terror begins. That is positively yeah. terrifying. Yeah. I'm happy they're not trying to eat me right me now. Me too. That's all. <laughs> and with the horrifyingly realistic horde assembled, listen to that sound. It's time to get down to experimental business. All right, zombies, are you ready? Adam, are you ready? I'm ready, sir. All right. Three, two, one. You're zombie meat, brother. I don't think I killed more than 20. I'll count. One, two, three, four, five, 11, 12, 13. 13, that's it? That's not many. Here's something that you should know about this test. Me being in the middle of this kind of scary warehouse and having 100 really nice people who've dressed as disgusting zombies ambling towards me is nonetheless terrifying, even though it's pretend. Even though I only killed 13 in that test, I'm still feeling really good about the axe as the weapon of choice. Dead! Dead! I just feel dead, that I can dead. reload faster than Jamie will be able to with a gun. Oh, I've been killed! Just to make sure that that test was accurate, I'm gonna have the zombies brought out again. I'm gonna try a second time so we can average my results across both tests. Adam, back from the dead, gets ready once again to take on the undead. All right, zombies attack in three, two, one. Will Adam be able to use his knowledge from test one to improve his zombie count? He's a blur of action, holding off his creeping, moaning, and shuffling attackers as long as he can. But as before, by sheer weight of numbers, the encroaching slow motion zombie tsunami overwhelms our axe-wielding hero. I think I got further this time. I think I killed more. He did, but okay. just barely. I got 15. I got 15 as well. 15 it is. Which is an average kill count of 14, and good, consistent data. But will it outgun the gun? Up next is the Heinemann. I just want to get warmed up. And he means business. Zombie killing business. 